at the end of the day, the, the point of the application process is so that we can tell the owner all about you and so that the owner knows and feels comfortable with who it is that's going to be living in their property. Going one, going twice, no. All right, guys, welcome back to The Property Pod, your weekly engagement into real estate here in the Hobart Marketplace. I'm your host, Aaron Horn, and I am joined by some superstars at the desks, but not the superstars that you think would normally be here. I do have regular old Pat. I'm here. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show, but I do have his better half joining us for the show today. Welcome to The Property Pod once again, Abby Berry. Good morning. Thank you. Um, what we wanted to do was bring you in for today's show to talk all things property management. We kind of often get um, stuck in here talking sales. We've got the two sales agents uh, that are kind of spilling their stuff, their guts. I want to talk property management today. There's heaps of stuff out there to talk about. And the day of release is, would you imagine, National Property Managers Day. Yeah. Woohoo! So a day made to celebrate the uh, the wonderful work that you guys do. It's probably a thankless job in some ways, but it is a rewarding job when you do it right. So I thought if we got you in, you could tell us all about property management and um, give us – I thought the one thing I'd really like to cover off is, is helping people um, apply for a property or some tips that will help you make a good impression with um, – with applying to to get a rental, so perfect timing because you've just gone through the experience. <laughs> yes, but I feel like my experience may have been a little bit different to um, the average person. So, give us a rundown on how everything's going in the in the department here at Four One Four, and maybe from there we can jump deep into applications and stuff. Sure. Um, well, the last twelve months for us since the last National Property Managers Day, we've had a lot of change. Um, we've grown the department. The our rent roll has grown, I think, by about. 100 properties. About 100, 110 you know, properties, I think. Since last year. Yep. So we've been busier than ever um, in our department. Um, we now have extra assistants. We have extra portfolio managers. So, so if, if we look back to this time last year, how many staff were kind of on your team then and then how many staff have we got on the team now? I think this time last year we had maybe six. Six or seven, I reckon. Yeah, and now we're up to, Nine. including me, ten. Oh, ten. There you go. We've hit double digits. Welcome to the big leagues. Yes, so um, never a dull moment in property management anymore. No, so that's what I kind of thought it'd be nice to talk about. Like we often talk about the stories of um, on the other side of the fence of sales and all these things, but maybe kind of going through some of the day-to-days of property management. One thing I was talking, celebrating National Property Managers Day, was we had a few property managers here that kind of took it upon themselves at Christmas time to help out a uh, tenant who had fallen down on their luck. Mm-hmm. Um, I just thought it's a really nice story. It might be just a nice way of humanising and showing that, you know, we're not the bad guys. No, we try not to be. Exactly. Usually sometimes we get stuck in really difficult situations where we have to play the bad guy, but we certainly don't love that part of our jobs, that's for sure. No, definitely. Do you want to go into the details of kind of what – I know they didn't do it for the like let's – the shout glory. it from the rooftop and no. for the glory, it was kind of just for the kindness. Would you want to kind of just, we'll just talk about what um, Talisa, Michaela and Georgia all, all did for this. Yeah. Um, so we had a tenant, um, he I believe is a single dad with five children. Um, he was going through a rough time, which the girls were aware of. It was coming up to Christmas time. Um, and they could see that he was struggling, so they took it upon themselves to um, all put, get together and buy him some gift vouchers to help him through the Christmas period, which was just amazing. And they kind of did it under the radar and didn't really tell anyone because they didn't want it, as you say, for the glory. They just wanted to help out this person and it, give back. Yeah, it wasn't just gift cards for him to buy groceries or anything. It was like little presents for his kids yeah, as well. Yeah, there was gifts for the kids. So that yeah. he had something to give them on Christmas Day. Yeah, I, look, uh, from my point of view, it was amazing hearing the story kind of go around the office because I think I was – we might have been recording a podcast while he was in. I Somehow – I oh, no, because our, our office was right near kind of where the meeting space was and I could hear them talking to him and then after he left, there was just this energy of just like, oh, we want to do something really nice. Um, and then it kind of just grew steam, grew steam and by the end it was going around like, oh, did you hear McCall and that helped out such and such? And then it just kind of had this feel-good story of just like, oh, my God, these guys are amazing and they've just done it from the kindness of their heart. But And they've kind of done it because there's such a good nature and um, relationship built here in yep. 4 and 4 in the team. So it's a credit to you for running your department the way you do but also for 
the whole like, business. For finding this group of people that work in property management. Exactly. And, and nurturing. They all feed off each other so well and they all look after each other so well. It's and I think often people think that because we're the property managers, all we think about is making money and getting the most rent for properties. But we hear some really rough and hard stories, particularly in some of the areas that we work within. And we're human at the end of the day. We're not just property managers and we can relate to those stories and we do hear a lot of them and we'd want we want to help everybody if we could. But yeah, it they just that one little giving back and help out where they can. Yeah, well, like, like it's just one small example of kind of the kindness that can come from the role and kind of, yeah, having human interactions with people is something that we definitely, um, yeah, love here at 4 and 4. Kind of that idea of giving back is, is a big part of the um, process. But I guess today we wanted to come in and celebrate you guys and give back to you guys and your team and kind of say like, hey, thanks for all the hard work you're doing. We're doing a, a few things for National Property Managers Day. Yes, we do you are. Want, do you want to um, – we'll, we'll let the cat out of the bag here. Yes. 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 Well, it's actually good that you're the one that we got into the studio today because I was trying to round up a property manager, but it would have ended up being – we would have had to say, you're in the cone of silence now, <laughs> which we know – not very good in this office. No, there's no code of silence in this <laughs> office. Um, yeah, do you want to run us through kind of National Property Managers Day and what we're doing here for the for the team? Yeah, so it, National Property Managers Day um, is actually on Friday, but um, as a few of our team won't be here on Friday, we've decided we're just going to do it a day early. Yeah. Um, so we've got some decorations coming in overnight, some balloons and little banners. Um, we've organised gift packs from the Richmond Botanical Co. for them, little pamper packs. Yeah, I had a look at these yesterday. They look really cool. You went and picked them up as well, Pat. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I was halfway through taking a sip of coffee. <laughs> yes, I did. Aaron. Oh, excellent. <laughs> I was on that. <laughs> yeah, um, Richmond Botanical Co. They make some beautiful candles and soaps. Um, and we wanted to support a local business, which is often what we want to do when we're buying gifts in Indeed. the company. So yep. thought they were a great company to use to spoil our team. Yeah, shout out to those guys. Uh, kick them butt. <laughs> we're going to have some fun as well. Like, I think you, Aaron, have got some little video pop. Quiz questions that we're going to ask people. I believe and there may be a TikTok. Yeah, I just look. It is. It's. It's hard work that you guys do, and you guys still seem to make a lot of fun out of it, and still kind of. Yeah, you've got everyone's interests at heart, but you're still just doing an amazing job at having such a a fun, fun loving bunch of people together. So let's celebrate that, and let's like yeah, let the world know that we're like yeah, a fun team here at Fun Four. Sometimes we're maybe a bit too fun. <laughs> <laughs> there are times when, but look, the work always gets done and always gets it done to a high standard. <laughs> um, so yeah, rather than just kind of fluffing our tires for the whole time, I did think for a bit of advice for people out there, could we go into um, if you're looking for a property, what's the best way to stand out for an application or? How do I apply for a property? What's the best way of um, looking for a place? Yeah. So what this, can is, I this is a good question because we're still, correct me if I'm wrong, getting quite large numbers to op open homes and result in quite large lists of applications. So how do you make your application look better than the other 20 that you're competing against? Well, the first thing I can say is to make sure that you fill out every part of the application Um probably 70% of applications that we receive that are missing some part of the um, application. So then we have to spend time coming back to them. Um, if we have your application and another one that's completed properly, we're going to process that one quicker than the, and get through it quicker than which if we gives have them to come a better back chance. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So is that something like references or kind of past rental history, yeah, like things like that? Yeah, be surprised at the important information that people leave off applications, even like contact details for where they were previously living. Um, obviously, that's one of the main um, references that we want to get. Um, even simple things like phone numbers for themselves, um, date of births. Previous like rental, well, previous living, what if you haven't rented a property before and say, you know, you're like you and me, Abby, that we've just sold a place and now we're moving into the rental market. What does somebody do in that circumstance? Yeah, um, so if you have sold a house, for instance, you can put down the sales agent that you used to sell the house. Okay. They've been through your property. They can give us an idea of how you presented the property, how yep. you kept it. Um, they may not be able to confirm things such as um, rental payments, but then in that circumstance you could provide a copy of a bank statement that shows your regular mortgage payments so that we can see that they were paid. So there's always ways around those things. 
Um, if you're living at home with mum and dad, obviously that's a little bit more difficult because most mum and dads say that their children are wonderful and keep yeah. the house clean. I have had one that I called and mum was like, you know what, he's really messy, he's not great, but it, that, that's I not think that the norm. I that didn't want him to leave. <laughs> yeah, she was like, I'll keep him in the nest a little bit longer. Yeah. Was that when you rang Bassie's mum? <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> Sorry, mate, you can't have that property. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there is always ways. I think a lot of the time um, applicants think that they just can't provide that information, but there's always something that you can give to us that we can look into. Um, at the end of the day, the, the point of the application process is so that we can tell the owner all about you and so that the owner knows and feels comfortable with who it is that's going to be living in their property. Yeah, so ultimately it's the owner deciding on the um, who the tenant will be, but you'll just give them kind of here are the applications and they might be vetted from, you know, most suitable to least suitable based on your judgment yeah, from so the applications? Um, our process is we receive all the applications. Um, we then, if there's many, many, many applications, we'll then go through them and um, we won't process all of them. If there's a lot, we'll pick out the ones that on paper look the best. Okay. Those will be the ones that are initially processed and then we'll take those to the property owner once all the references are checked and um, have a discussion with the property owner, answer, answer any questions or queries that they may have. Sometimes they'll ask us to go back to the applicant with some extra questions that they have. Yep. And then ultimately the property owner will make the decision. Um, there's very, not It's not very often that the property owner will just say to us, you just pick. We don't have many owners at all. Yeah. That is the case for. And I guess that's good practice for setting up kind of, yeah, like here are the things that we can do to help you to get to the point, but you've got to make the decision kind of like, Pat with selling, like I can tell you that this is a good offer, but it's up to you to make that decision. Make that decision. Yeah. It's it's that way. Yeah, yep. Um, and, you know, sometimes the owner will ask us which one would you pick and we can give them our advice on that. But ultimately we like them to make the decision because, as I said, they're the ones that have to be comfortable with who's living in their property. I guess just going from there, can we go back to um, say there's gaps in your application? Um, like do, do the people know that they've got the gap there and they're just not putting the stuff in. Like, how does it work with these gaps that we were talking about? So, if we look at an application and think that like 60, 70% of it, oh, they look pretty good. But when we're missing this, then we will come back to you and ask for you to fill in those gaps because we are interested to see what the answers are and to um, go further with your application. Yep. Um, but if I have 20 applications and you haven't filled out all the information and 10 of those 20 are completed correctly and, and are looking good on paper, I'm probably not going to spend the time coming back to you to get that information if you haven't provided it in the first place. And I think something to point out as well these days is that most companies are using To Apply, which is our application to program. Apply or, or Snug. Or um, I think REA have one called Ignite. So yeah. yeah. So Snug sounds fun. I like the sense of that one. <laughs> so by the time you've – if you take the time and set up your application correctly once – you can actually use it for us or LJ Hooker or Roberts Real Estate. Yeah, that's correct. Um, and even now, um, Inspect Real Estate, who have run to apply, have another program that we have access to called Find Me a Tenant. And so when you're filling out your application, you can elect in the application process to let um, uh, let agents contact you if you've got an application that's filled out that they think might be suitable for the property. Okay, cool. I get like all I'm thinking is that I know there's you often hear people saying I'm falling in the cracks. I'm putting in applications into all these places. I'm not getting anywhere in my brain. I'm like, all right, how do we help those people get across the line? And so it's basically fill out all your stuff. Make sure and as much you can put as as much info of yours to us so that we can make a decision from that. I might be speaking out of turn, but I would assume you can't put too much information into an application. You cannot give us too much information, <laughs> yeah. no. So even if you don't think it's potentially relevant, but it's something to do with past housing, maybe just put it in. What if yep. I'm a snake charmer? You're not getting a property <laughs> off me. <laughs> <laughs> Let it be known. <laughs> Keep that bit off. <laughs> <laughs> if you own reptiles, do not come to me. <laughs> um. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <I've got another. laughs> That's discrimination, but yeah. anyway. <laughs> no pets. <laughs> um, all right, so so what I am trying to work out is, yeah, helping these people fall th that are falling through the gaps. I, I just, I'm 
hearing about the crisis and I just want people to have the best chance of getting a home, I'm thinking like you're showing up to the um, open for inspections and, and meeting the property managers. What's the best way to make a good impression? Like if I make a good impression there, can that help my application at Absolutely. the next stage? All right, hit me with these details. So often um, the one of the purposes of the showing is for you to see the property, but it's also for us to get to know potential applicants yep. um, and we'll often come back to the office and we will have earmarked, oh, I, I like this person, I thought this person seemed like they could be suitable and they will be the applications we're looking for first. Um but standing out of the, at, at the showing, um, it's a fine line. It's a fine line. <laughs> so okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> so you could go too far. Yes. Yeah, so um, sometimes when we go to showings, um, we'll often have mo- lots of groups of people at a showing. Um, sometimes there will be one person who wants to commandeer our time entirely. That's not a good way to stand. Okay. Out. Yep. You've frustrated us. We can't give our time to everybody. Um, if you. <clears throat> Are talking to us a lot and taking up all of our time and focus, it kind of gives us red flags and we're thinking, okay, well, if I put you into a property, are you going to be calling me all the time? Yep. Um, so ne- it's not necessary to make yourself known by taking up all of our time at the showing. Come up to us, say, hi, I'm such and such, ask one or two questions and then go and look at the property, leave, move along. All right. I'm just thinking outside the square, but would if I rocked up to the the open home and I took my shoes off and left them at the door and walked through the house, does that give me like does that show that I'm thoughtful of the property a bit more? Absolutely. Or, yeah. yeah. So even though you may not ask for a tenant to remove their shoes, is that just something that might give me that little one percenter to? Absolutely, because that shows me that you're going to care for the property if I were to put you in there because you've already taken that step just by taking off your shoes. Yeah. So just being respectful of the house that you're inspecting as well and making sure that. You know, you take that extra step to to look after it, even though you're just inspecting the property. Yep, it's it's such an interesting one because as you're describing the person that's talking to you constantly, I can feel inside like the the person that's so hungry for a place that's just like I've just got to like ask yeah. every question because I just got to let them know that yeah. I'm and this hungry we for it. Understand that, and we get that it's a really tough rental market, and you do your know, people are just trying to get our attention as much as possible. But sometimes oh. it goes so far the other way that it's negative attention, yeah, and it puts us off a little bit. We kind of discussed this in the open home one as well, like the person on the other end of that spectrum who's kind of quite quiet and mousy. And you go to one of these things and you just kind of fall into the background and don't get seen. How do you get noticed at something like that? And I guess it's just reaching out in a different way and to say, oh, I was at this open home and I... I think we talked about it once before, maybe just a quick text, text message or- after the open home to the agent saying, thanks for your time today. Um, I'll get my application in as quick as possible. Like Yep. Little little things like that. If you're not brave enough to potentially come and talk to the property manager because, you know, you do struggle with interaction, you know, something like that or yeah. like emails, thank you for the time. Um, and at most open homes that you go to, especially with our office, you when you get there you have to check in. You, you know, we ask your name so we can tick you off so that we know you are there. That's your opportunity to have a brief interaction with us yep. so that we know who you are, we can remember you when we get back to the office. Um don't take up the next 10 minutes of the showing and so nobody else can talk to us. No, very, very sound advice there. The other one that we've talked about is colourful socks. If you pull on those um, shoes off and you've got, remember, oh, I remember that guy with the hamburger socks? <laughs> um, the girls also did say to me before I came in here to um, mention that don't come in your pyjamas because that makes a negative impression. <laughs> okay, so that is a regular occurrence? It ha- it has it's happened. happened. It has happened. When we're talking pyjamas, we're just talking pyjamas or like oversized hoodies that people pajamas. love to wear? Because <laughs> I'm an hoodie fan, but I don't know pajamas. if I'd leave the house in it. <laughs> it's funny, I only became the guy that wore his Ugg boots out of the house the other day. Like I think once you become a dad, it's kind of like, oh, I can't really put my shoes on, Ugg boots out of the house to the supermarket. Like <laughs> was a cardinal sin in the past. Oh, now I'm as I'm known for it. Officially part of Glenorchy now. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome Woo, to I did Glenorchy. It. I did it. <laughs> you, uh, you are now 100 percent ingrained <laughs> in the culture of Glenorchy. Um, I'll take that. I, I love this city. Um, all right. Well, from there, I think that might be a point just to jump off. Unless you've got anything else you wanted to add on applications or finding um, the right tenant. Um, I guess the end part of the process that we probably haven't touched on is when am I going to hear back about my application? Okay, yeah, a great idea. Um, So 
in our agency, we have plenty of software helping us out to keep you on track. So um, you will always hear back about your application, sending us an email every day or ringing us every day asking how your application's going is again probably going to put Hinder. your application down the list a little bit. Okay, so, yeah. And because every day we will tell you, we'll be in touch as soon as we have an answer for you. We don't want to leave anybody waiting. We understand that you want an answer. Yep. Um, but depending on the number of applications we receive, um, how many referees we have to call, whether they're getting back to us, the time that we can that it takes to process the application can Is there take a more wor- time. Is there a worst case scenario as to how long? So I know every application is different and every property is different. Like some might be done in a couple of days, some might take a lot longer. But hypothetically, say if I haven't heard anything for, I don't know, 10 days. Is that a red Look, flag? Look, if you hadn't heard anything in 10 days, I'd probably be in touch. Um, we do generally... You probably haven't got the properties. <laughs> yeah, we but. do generally try to have an answer to you within a few days, but there's okay. so many variables that yeah. we can't... We used to be able to, you know, five years ago, we used to tell you 24 to 48 hours. Now, just with the volume, it's too hard to put a number and it really it can be very dependent on the property, how many showings are being done, the owner, because some, some owners will get back to us in three minutes, other owners may take three days to yeah. get back to us. I can assume as well that potentially can make a different time depending on how many properties we're currently managing or have available for rent at a time. Yeah, so absolutely. I'm assuming if we had 20 properties available and we're processing applications on all 20, that could slow down all of them rather than only having yeah, five Yeah, and if you're emailing me every day, I could be spending that time processing, processing your application, application yeah. and not having to respond to every applicant emailing me asking how long their application is going to take. So again, it's kind of don't be that guy at the open home that's too pushy and then don't be the person afterwards that's also too pushy. Mm-hmm. We understand that um, need know you definitely. need to know an answer, but yeah, yeah, everything's being done in as quickly as possible and as efficiently as possible to make sure and the right what? decisions made. We want the property rented as fast as possible too. So yes. it's our goal every day to see how many properties we can lease. So we're not in it. We're never going to be deliberately holding it up. We want to get you an answer as soon as possible. Sometimes it just takes longer than others. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Awesome, excellent. I like talking about this stuff. Why don't we talk about this stuff more? Oh, because John dictates the conversation every <laughs> week and we have to get rid of him. Do you want me to come and talk about how to clean showers next week? Yeah, well, I hear you had to clean a sink last night. Oh. <laughs> we won't go into that. It's, oh, that's it's not appropriate. That is not appropriate. <laughs> I think that's a true crime podcast, but <laughs> if you want to know more about that, reach out. Definitely a crime, that's for sure. <laughs> if you want to know more about that, reach out and, um, yeah, we'll just let you know in a private thread. <laughs> Uh, uh, leave the leave the yeah leave them saying? hanging yeah just kind of what are they do you reckon they'll talk about that next week <laughs> um, we're never talking about it again. <laughs> cone of silence <laughs> all right National Property Managers Day is today we're so excited to celebrate our team thank you so much for joining us once again thank it you. took and us a whole thank year thank you to our amazing property management team too ah exactly no massive thank you to them massive thank you to um, yeah all the hard work they do and for coming in and still wearing a smile every day and I think we said Michaela promised this morning she's like i'm gonna behave at work today i'm gonna be a a good person i think she lasted what 20 minutes (laughs) not even (laughs) but that just shows how much fun we have in this place and also a happy birthday shout out to grace who can't be with us today because she's really unwell but happy birthday happy birthday grace nothing worse than being sick on your birthday i hope you get spoiled um by your aaron yes (laughs) all right sweet thank you so much for coming in abby and yeah we can't reiterate enough how um, amazing the property management team is so happy day for you i can't wait for um national real estate media worker day (laughs) hint hint nudge nudge we better talk to the rit about making that (laughs) national real estate media day yeah (laughs) media guy day that does things All right. Thank you, everybody, for listening to the Property Pod. We really appreciate it. See you guys. And we'll be back next week. Thank you, Abby. Bye. Bye. You have been listening to the Property Pod, recorded and edited by 414 Media House in conjunction with 414 Property Co. This podcast is general information only, and the thoughts and views expressed is the opinion of our panel, and listeners should always seek their news, their own investigation into any topic we discuss to ensure they fully understand their own situation. It does not constitute and should not be relied on as purchasing, selling, financial or investment advice or recommendations expressed or implied, and it should not be used as an invitation to take up any agent or investment services. No investment decision or activity should be undertaken on the basis of this information without first seeking qualified and professional advice.